All right. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Good. Everybody's like, fall break has begun, and I'm so tired. Who here is tired today? But who here is excited about fall break? Let me hear you. All right. Love it. Okay. Because fall break is here for most of us, I know there's, some, there's probably a couple people in the room that are like, nah, my school is not on fall break yet, and that's the worst. Um, but you'll laugh at us when, when you're on break and we're not. I don't know why I'm saying we, because I'm not in school, even though I look like it. Um, okay, so tell me about something you're excited about for fall break. Somebody tell me about something you're excited about. Yeah, Caden. Sleeping in. Sleeping in. What are you thinking every day, bro? Like about 11 a.m.? How late? You get, you get to stay up till whenever you want on fall break? This is why I need Kurt. He's strong and I'm not. So you're going to sleep in on fall break. Love it. Yes, Michaela, right? Yeah, staying up late. Staying up late and sleeping in, right? Okay. So you're not like my kids who are seven and five and they stay up late and then they still wake up at six? You're not like that? No, okay. I'm in. Man, that's awesome. That has got to be, that, I don't know what that's like, but that's got to be awesome. Yes, Jax. What? No schoolwork. No school yes, love that. Uh, love that, love that. That's great. Yes, Eden. You're going to a cabin? Is it um, over the river and through the woods? And does grandmother live there? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm confusing you and I'm scaring everybody else. Okay, uh, have fun at the cabin. That sounds like fun. Are you guys there for like a week? Three days still. That's really awesome. Kentucky? You don't know? Just somewhere. Cabin out there somewhere. Love it. Yes, Haley. What are you excited about for fall break? You go to a lot of places. That's cool. Awesome. But she's like, ooh, I'm going to be suspenseful. I'm not going to tell you where I'm going to go, but I'm going to go lots of places. Love that. Colin. Yeah. Off-roading? No, that sounds fun. Uh, in a truck or UTV or ATV or four-wheeler, dirt bikes. Come on, dude. I'm coming with, all right? Just let me know when, and I just won't show up to work. Shh, don't tell anybody. Butch, I don't know who let you in here, but he's going to tell. They got the security guy, you know, someone's going to tell. Okay, anybody else, something you're excited about for fall break? Yes, I saw your hand up, young man. Video games. Video games, yeah, let's go. All my gamers in the room, let me hear you. Woo! Well, we heard some of them. The rest of them are still asleep because they stayed up all night playing video games. Yes, I am here. All right, sounds like an exciting fall break. I'm excited for all you guys being on break. Um, I also want to give a shout out real quick to our Thursday night crew. Um, they get to watch this video every week. Um, so if you're here ever on a Thursday night, you get to kind of hear what we learned this weekend. Um, so I want to encourage you. I want to shout out to my Thursday night crew. Love you guys. Glad you're here. There's some people in the room right now that are also Thursday night crew. But if you guys are ever going to be gone on the weekend with your family, um, drag your parents back to church on Thursday, okay, so you guys can hang out with us Thursday night hangouts. It's really fun, uh, pretty laid back. We get to hang out in the warehouse some, hang out at the cafe, play games in here. It's really fun. So we hope you'll make it out to Thursday night hangout sometime. Also, who here went to the fall retreat last weekend? And if you had fun, let me hear you shout. Awesome. Our fall retreat was really, really fun. Perfect weather out as it's been all this last week. We went to Wonder Valley, a really awesome camp, and we got to learn about the value of us being together. And that's, that was week three of our series, R4, okay? So we've been talking about what it looks like to be a youth group and a group of students known for kindness, the way Jesus showed kindness to us. We talked about what it looks like to look out for the lost, the way Jesus pursued the lost. I don't know if you guys remember us talking about the lost sheep, but how Jesus painted the picture of a shepherd who had 100 sheep, if he lost one, he left the 99 to go find the lost sheep. And in the same way, he wants us to find our lost friends and bring them to Christ. And then last weekend, we talked about being together, being united, being a family together. Um, so important. What you guys are here with us right now doing is so important to your faith. Please don't ever think, if you're here or if you're part of the Thursday night crew, that you are just here, just at church again, another weekend. It is so important for your faith and for you following Jesus, for you to be here with us every single week, okay? And we love that you're here, and we want to invite you back to live groups that we have every Sunday at 3.30. If you can come back this afternoon to hang out with us at live groups as we go deeper 
in this life together. But we've been through this series, and we've had a lot of fun in this series. R4, you guys see it up on the, up on the, uh, up on the wall there, that's our, that's our vision, okay? So if you ever see people throw up fours for pictures, we're coming back to R4, okay? We want to be students and adults and family together that, that show these things in our life. Kindness, loving the lost, being together, and then today, being real. So I want to tell you guys a story about being real. Can I tell you guys a story real quick? Okay. Who here likes stories? All right. Okay. Who here likes stories that um, involve somebody figuring out something that they didn't know before? Okay. I know that was a really, really complicated question. I am very sorry. <laughs> Erase that. Okay. Um, but I'm going to tell you guys a story a little bit about being real. Okay. Um, so... I remember back in college, um, going to college and, and, and thinking to myself, man, when I was in high school, I had it all together. Okay, do any of you guys think you got it all together like in middle school, like you're pretty cool stuff? No? What? I think you guys are the coolest people on the earth. Um, when you get to high school, it'll all change, okay? I promise you. You'll be like on top of the world, be loving this, loving that, all these different things going on. But when I went to college... Um, I remember thinking back and just being like, man, yeah, like high school was, was awesome. Um, like I was a pretty good athlete, had lots of friends, I was well liked. And something very, uh, and very particular that I always look back on <clears throat> when I was in college and when I was in high school was I actually thought that all the parents of my friends that were in high school, I, th I actually really thought, believed 100% that all the parents loved me. All right, does anybody, be honest, does anybody think all the parents of your friends love you? Yes, thank you, a brave soul, another brave soul. Anybody just think, man, they, yeah, that's right, let's go, yeah, okay, now they're starting to come up. You're like, yeah, they love me. Um, that's, the way that I, that's the way that I felt, okay? I thought, man, everybody likes me, like, um, like they trust me, I can, um, you know, I can go to my friend's house whenever I want, they can come with me, what, like, to do things. So I thought I had all this stuff like in the palm of my hand, like I was just like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm the real deal. No pun intended on real. Um, but so I, I thought that, I believed that. And then when I went to college, everything changes in college too. Um, I, I figured out through somebody that I love, my wife, Michelle, and through other people that not everybody had that perception about me. So have you guys ever been in a place in your life where you found something out that people looked at you or thought of you a little different, whether good or bad, than you thought that they did before? That you found out like, whoa, that person said that about me, or they think that about me, or they assumed that or said that? Okay, I think all of us can relate to that. So I started hearing some things, and so what did I do? I wish I had a rug up here. Oh, there's one back there. I just brushed under the rug. I was like, nah, that stuff ain't true. I started hearing, you know, like, hey, this person really wasn't your friend because they thought you were kind of a two-faced. And um, none, of, uh, none of these parents, you know, they, 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 they really actually had a different opinion. They knew you were just kind of being a suck-up. All right, I was kind of a suck-up, all right. Um, so I started hearing these things and, you know, being like all macho and like trying to be cool. Uh, I thought, man, that whatever, like. I was the real deal. Like, you know, I had my stuff together. Um, but the more that I heard it, and the more that I grew and matured and thought about that, it kind of started getting to me a little bit. And as I was studying for the sermon this week, I thought about it. And I was like, wow, that is a great illustration of what it means to be real or what it means to be fake. So basically what happened in my life is people had a perception of me that I wasn't being real or being authentic. You guys ever heard the word authentic before? If something is authentic, it's what? Real. It's real. Or what else? It's original. It's uh, if an artifact is authentic, uh, what does it mean that it is? Real. Real? Yes, thank you. Some, somebody else. Give me just a little more detail on it. Yeah. Accurate. Accurate. Ooh, that's a really good one. What else? What would you say? I know, it's, it's kind of crazy to think about, right? 
Like, if you look at things in life and you're like, man, that thing from the start to the finish is the same. It's authentic. It's real. It's, yeah, right. It might be ancient things. Those, those type of feelings, those type of things, I was starting to think about those things. And I was like, man, people didn't see me as being real. They saw two versions of Luke. And, and it probably took me quite a while to really accept that. Still working on it now, to be honest, because pride is something all of us can struggle with. We always think we have it all together. We always hide our problems, our struggles. Problems isn't a good word. Our struggles, our hurts, bad habits. I mean, I think most of you guys in the room have one of these, right? So people will take the photos of themselves, right? The selfies, right? Got a selfie with me? Um, but then what do they do to the photo after they're done before they post it? Photoshop it, edit, filter, whatever it is, okay? Um, even if they don't do that, what are they typically putting on social media? Happy. Look what I got to do. Look what I accomplished. Not bad things. But at the same time, we usually like to show other people what is good, what is positive, what is awesome about us. And we don't really like to share the other things. And that's why we're talking today about being real. Maybe you guys have had a friend. I think we got a, a meme to show you guys on the screen. Maybe you guys have had a friend like this before. Um, and you felt this way about him. When the fakest person you know talks about being real. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have had a friend like that before. I kind of thought it was a funny example. But in the, in, it, it actually is a great example of what we can look like sometimes in life. If we don't have Jesus at the very center of our lives, guys, the very center, not just coming to church, not just avoiding these bad things, but the very center of our lives, if Jesus doesn't give us purpose and value, and you don't know the value and purpose that you have in Jesus, then it is gonna be hard for you to be real going to be hard for you to be real, just like it was hard for me to be real. When I say the word real, I want you to think about it in this way. Being real means you be the same person wherever you are at all times. You're the same all the time. Sometimes I think people get the real version of me in both the good and the bad ways, and then I have to realize, you know, oh man, I have to work on that. Because even if I really care about people, if I come across this way sometimes or, uh, or I said, or, or people feel this way a little bit, if they're around me, if it's something a little negative, I need to check myself and, and ask God, God, please remind me who I am. I'm your child. I need to show grace and you show love to others the way that he showed love to me, the way that he showed love to you. So being real is being the same everywhere you are. And so I want you guys to take away three things today, three things. And if you um, have a notebook or you'd like to take notes, take notes on these things. If you have a phone and you can use it without being distracting, distracting someone else and without being distracted by other things, take these notes on your phone so you can take it with you today and you can reflect on it later today and this week, okay? Three things I want to give you guys. The first thing is this. It's a question, why is being real important? Why is it important? What do you guys think? Why is being real important? What do you think? Is that a pretty deep question? Why is it important? Let me share with you guys a little bit why I think it's important. I think being real is important in the way that Jesus says that it is. Because Jesus doesn't want us to ever act like we're perfect. And maybe you've had teachers... Or your parents or people in your life try to make you feel like you need to be perfect. You need to perform at this level. You need to be this. You need to be that. But that's not what Jesus intended you to be or to feel. Jesus said it isn't about you trying to be perfect. It's actually admitting that you're not perfect. So why is it important to be real? Because we're not perfect. And because we have to understand and believe every day the way that we live, guys, that Jesus died for you. He died for me and he offered us grace. He forgave us 
because he knew we wouldn't be perfect. He forgave us because he wanted us to be real. And another reason why it's important is because if you're real, it will change your life. It will change your life. If you think you're the best athlete, you're the best academic in your class, you're the best dancer, you're the best player at this activity, you're the best friend, you're the best anything. If you think that and you live your life that way, that will be the thing that fills you up. But those things don't last. Just like it didn't last for me, I thought I was a, a pretty good athlete. And what got the best of me? Probably less of the sport, more of my own pride. And it affected my friendships. Actually, it affected some of the people that I thought were my friends. Some of the people I thought looked up to me, they actually despised me because I wasn't real. Because I let my own selfish things come out. I didn't realize at the time that people would be attracted to something real, something authentic. If you are real about where you're at today, where you're at tomorrow, the good things, the bad things the good times, the low times, God will use that to change others. He'll change you and he'll let you change others by the way that you live. The second thing is this. We have to always look at what Jesus says about everything that we talk about. So what does Jesus say about being real? Jesus said this in Luke 12. He said, the time is coming when everything that's covered up will be revealed. And all that's in secret will be made known to all. Whatever you said in the dark will be heard in the light. Whatever you've whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops. What does that mean? It means that our life, the way that we live, who we are, it will all be revealed before God. And others will see that at different times, just like people saw it in me in high school and college. It will be revealed. What do you want to be known for? Don't ever think because you're 10, 12, 14, however old you are, don't ever think that your life is any less valuable or the way that people see you is less than someone else. People look up to you. People older than you, people younger than you. They look up to you for the example that you set. There were times in my life, I think, when people looked up to me, and then there were times in my life when people didn't, and they had a negative opinion of me because I wasn't the same person everywhere I was. So what do, we, what do you want to be known for? Jesus says you need to be known for your grace, for your love. You need to be known for not being perfect and being okay with that. And just being real every single day. And the third thing is this. How do we be real? How do we actually live this out? How do we be authentic? We got to look at the example of Jesus. What did Jesus do when he was sad? He went to pray to his father. He talked with his disciples about it. What did Jesus do when he was angry? Sometimes he took that out in a righteous way, in a way that would please God. What did Jesus do when he lost a friend? He cried. Jesus showed every emotion that he felt to give us the example. This is what being real looks like. You're going to have great days. You're going to have bad days. What do you want to be known for? How do you be real? You do it every day, and a great way you can do it is shown in Psalm 139. It says this, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. What does Jesus say in Psalms about being real? He says, man, you just need to go to God and say, God, would you please just search me? Would you see if the things in my life that are anxious, the things that I'm scared of, the things that I'm struggling with, you already know it, but God, would you just like help reveal that and help me through that? God wants to help you through all things that you have going on in your life. And the Psalm also says, God, please point out anything in me, in you, that might offend you. Any sin, any habit, any struggle you might have. That's the way we, we can pray. 
Psalm 139, we can say, God, please just point out what, what in my life is not right and get that right with you. That's how we be real. When we do that, it says we can be led along the path of everlasting life. I think sometimes it's as simple as this, guys. We need to ask ourselves, am I really a Christian? Do I really believe in Jesus? Do I believe Jesus died for me and gave me a purpose? And is my life worthy of someone else following my example? Um, I want to bring up a friend of mine. Um, let's see, who would be willing to come up here on stage? Um, Michaela. Give it up for my friend Michaela, guys. All right, Michaela, you can come right over here. Thanks for coming up here with me. Okay, so Michaela, friends with Eden, right? You guys are besties. Um, Michaela, if you live your life a certain way here at church, but then you're totally different at school or you're totally different with your other friends, and then you see some of those people together or those things conflict, do you think that your example will be very good or do you think it will be bad? It will be bad, right? Yeah. Um, even if right now you – there's things that you do that you enjoy and you love it and maybe things look a little bit different at school or in this activity or club or sport than they do here at church. Like, you still will kind of be living two different lives, right? Yeah. But if you set an example of being real, not just here with all these people, but in every way you live for Jesus, you ask him to show you his purpose every day, do you think that God can use that? Probably. Probably, yeah, he can and he will, but here's, the, here's the, the, the part about it that is really, really deep, guys. If Michaela lives this out, if you live this out, the example of being real, being authentic, you're also going to face some hard things. Not everybody's going to like that. Not everybody's going to see that you're different and you look out for the left out and you treat people with kindness. And I know that's the type of person you already are. You're a very kind, loving person. But when you take that to the next level, Michaela, when... Our friends here do that. Not everybody is going to, not, not everybody's going to love that. Yeah. But you know what it's going to do? It's going to change people's perception of you. They're going to see that you're different. And Jesus said, that's how people will know that you love him, is by the way that you live differently. Thanks for being my example. Give it up for Michaela, guys. So here's what we have to do. And I'm not just telling you guys this. I'm telling myself this. I'm telling our leaders this. We got to stop acting like we have it all together. We got to be who Jesus created us to be. That's how we be real. You know, that's the example that a, a friend of mine a long time ago set. His name was John. He's one of my teachers um, in, in um, Sunday school a long time ago. 25, 30 years ago. And uh, John always, always looked out for me. He was always that friend, that mentor that would pull me aside, sit by me, come talk to me, check on me. You guys have friends like that, people like that in your life? Man, it matters so much. But you know what's the cool thing about John? He wasn't just like a nice guy. He wasn't just a person that looked out for me. He was a guy that no matter who you asked, Everybody knew he was the same person everywhere he went. He was the same everywhere he went. And I remember when he passed away, I hadn't seen him for years. I think I was in college. Yeah, I was in college. And I heard that he got cancer and passed away. And I thought, man. thought, man, God, you put someone in my life when I was your age, when your age, when your age, just like I hope every single one of you have here. And if you don't have it, somebody is here that wants to be that in your life, to show you the example of what it looks like to be real, to be loving, to be kind, to be the same person wherever they went. I knew when I look back on my life when I was that age, I knew that, 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 that John made a difference in my life. And I didn't learn enough about it when I was your age. I learned about it a lot longer, a lot later in life when I found out he passed away and I thought about 
the example he set for me, no matter who I asked or who was around me, they all had the same opinion of John. He loved Jesus and he lived his life for Jesus every day. He didn't have everything. He didn't have the grandest life. And he, he, he left too soon. But God used him in a real, authentic way, in the same way that God wants to use you. 